I just like breasts. <laughs> Saucy. I like feminine, kind of pretty girls. Mm -hmm. Threesome. Yeah. It was either like women or animals. Enjoy it. It just makes me really horny. What can a woman do? That makes sense. I'm just excited. Come on, 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 Fancy boys and I fancy girls as well. <laughs> she just comes out with it. Like, oh, I like girls. So she makes it really normal as if it's just the most normal thing in the world. But if one time there was a really fit girl and I was, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you, you just can't ever say that you'd never ever do it. I fancy the masculinity in a man and I fancy femininity in a woman. Girls are a lot more gentle and like soft, whereas guys are a bit like rougher. We get a bit more overexcited. Forceful. Yeah, a bit more forceful. <laughs> You're a bisexual. <laughs> In my head, I, I fancied her, but at the same time, I was like, well, I shouldn't really be fancying her because she's a girl. I am bi curious slash sexual, and I'm happy about it now that I'm 23 and I'm an adult now. I'm a woman. And I can do whatever I like now, I'm not care what anybody else thinks, so this is it. This is it. This is it. I'm happy. Sex between women is nothing new, but fashion now dictates that each decade heralds a new vogue in girl-on-girl -girl action. The 80s brought us lipstick lesbianism, the 90s lesbian chic. The latest phenomenon is bisexuality, girls who are interested in sex with girls as well as boys. And they are more common than we think. Celebrities are leading the way when it comes to bisexual displays of affection. Madonna and Britney happily snogged at the MTV Awards, and these famous women have all dabbled in girl-on-girl -girl action. Today in Britain, the bisexual activities of celebrities are fast becoming acceptable to an increasing number of girls as a genuine rite of passage. All part of growing up. Beth and her friends are 21-year-old students who live together in Brighton. Although her friends are straight, Beth is bisexual and regularly goes out with girls as well as boys. I think if I was going to chat with a boy, I'd be so obvious because they don't notice you otherwise. You just basically have to throw yourself at a boy for him to even know, know that you vaguely have seen him. Whereas a girl will notice, like, you smiling at her. <laughs> Like the thought of like going down on a girl was just like, <laughs> ugh, horrible. Really couldn't, like, really wouldn't want to do that. But it's all right once you, once you actually do it, and you, it's all fine. It feels more natural, more comfortable with a woman, even if I don't know them that well. Um, just because you know your way around their anatomy, <laughs> and I suppose like men's bodies are a lot more foreign. But in but in a sense, that can be nice that can be quite attractive because it's different. But do lesbians have a problem with the fact that you're bisexual? Um, I've pulled a girl before and I think she was a proper lesbian. I think she was like a little bit sceptical that I was just like experimenting or something. It's like you have to prove yourself, which is a bit annoying. How do you do that? Don't know, have sex with a girl or something. Beth and her friends leave for a night out in Brighton. I hope there's some like pretty girls and boys. Yeah. And loads of bisexuals. <laughs> A wet and windy Luton might not seem like the capital city of romance, but it's where 23-year-old hairdresser Debbie met and fell in love with Orville, the man she intends to marry. It was love at first sight, you know. It was for me anyway. Because I knew, as soon as I saw him, that he was going to be the person that I spent the rest of my life with. Did you visit love at first sight for you? Um, it was nice. It was really nice. But 
you know, it's like um, I didn't I didn't try to make a move or anything. We met in February and we didn't talk until um, September, October. Yeah, September, October, yeah. When we were together for the first time, it was his first time. So I didn't know. I thought, you know, um, if he's a virgin, then I don't know if he's really yeah, good or anything. But then I discovered the, the amazing, like, nine inch up, basically. <laughs> Debbie, however, wants more. Like many women, she calls herself bi-curious rather than bisexual because she's interested in girls but hasn't done anything about it until recently. I put an advert in the web pals. I'm bi-curious and I want to meet someone who feels the same as me, my details, my height and everything. And I got a few replies but nothing ever materialised out of them. I tried to find other sites but there wasn't really any anything out there or then I didn't know many addresses so I just tried the ones off the top of my head. I've told some people but then nobody wants to talk about it so I feel like I've got a weight on my shoulders and I haven't got nobody to talk to. Frustrated by the lack of progress on her journey of exploration, Debbie answered our advert in Loot. I met you guys after finding number in the back of the loop, looking somewhere where I shouldn't really be looking. In the beginning, I was looking at pets because I wanted to get a new kitten. <laughs> and then I just ended up looking through the whole um, newspaper until I got to the back. And I saw this advert. It just said, by curious. And if being by curious and not knowing how to go about it and that, and I just thought, well, that's me. But before Debbie can explore her bisexual desires, there is one obstacle she needs to overcome. I do love my boyfriend, but if I had the opportunity to cheat on him, I know it sounds a bit bad, but if that came about, I wouldn't cheat on him with a man because I prefer women and that's it. He, he knows I prefer women to men. He's a bit scared because there's so many women out there. He thinks that I'm looking at them all. But yeah, I like women better than men, more than men. I would be in a relationship with a woman if I wasn't with him. He's coming to terms with it. He th he's, he's realised now that I've got needs as well as him having needs, so he's slowly but surely coming round to it, which is all good. It's all good for me. I'm attracted to pretty girls. Not even just pretty, just attractive. I think everyone's attractive in their own way. And... It's funny, I feel very ashamed to say, not ashamed, just embarrassed. <sighs> I just like breasts, what can I say? Debbie is not alone in her unfulfilled feelings for women. This is Lindsay, she's 24 and by day loves nothing more than galloping around on her horse flump. But at night, she drops her jodhpurs and turns from stable prancer into table dancer. I'm Lindsay and I'm 24 years old. I've got a boyfriend at the moment. I've been going out with him for about a year and a half. Um, but I'm uh, interested in ladies as well. When I was growing up, it was always My Little Ponies, that sort of thing, very pink girly stuff. I was completely straight when I was working for the water board. I was going out with somebody for quite a few years then. I think the first time I had any feelings towards girls sexually is when I was dancing in a club called Venus. I'm at the stage at the moment where I'm really curious. I want to go further with a woman. But I just keep it quite light-hearted to begin with. I don't want a relationship or anything, you know, but I just want something else to happen. I want something a bit more fun to happen and maybe get on a girly night out or, you know, get drunk or come back and start, you know, having sex. Have a go. At the end of the day, don't try both, don't let me know. Don't knock it till you try it. It's the only way to find out is to have a go, but don't break anyone's heart in the process. A girl with a girl. I wouldn't like that. Pura. Yeah. 
Angela is 29. She lives and works in London. Seven years ago, she discovered that she had sexual feelings for women. When you're bi-curious, you feel like you're sitting in limbo because you don't know what side of the fence to be on and whether you ever really want to be on one. And it's, it's a strange feeling, but when you finally find out, when you finally know which, I mean, whether it's boys or girls or whether it's actually both that you want, then, then you really know. And that's only, only when you, that's when you become happy, I think. And I'm very happy that I chose girls. Very. <laughs> Good. Mm. Are you happy? Yes. Good. <laughs> Angela and Ellie have been together for a year. Ellie always considered herself straight until just before she met and fell in love with Angela. Yeah, a lot of girls that she's like had liaisons with, with that's a good word. have been straight. Straight as in previously having boyfriends and then having sex with me and or a relationship or whatever, and then uh, going back to guys afterwards. Um, that's happened to me quite a lot. I could never see myself having a sexual relationship with a girl, never. It was just something that I hadn't even thought about. It, it was like, I'd be like, mm, mm, no, that's a bit weird. That was until Ellie started a new job where her favorite colleague turned out to be gay. We'd been talking about what we wear when we go to bed. You know, one of those conversations that girls have, oh yeah, I wear pajamas, I don't wear anything. And anyway, I said that I wear boxer shorts in bed. And I got home and I sent her a text message saying, oh, I had a really lovely evening, I'll see you at work tomorrow. About half an hour later, she sent me one back saying, are you wearing boxer shorts? And I was like, is this a flirtation or is this, or is she just... And then I thought, well, she's obviously flirting with me. So I just replied back saying, no, I'm not wearing anything at all. And then the kind of text conversation went from that. We were kind of like really flirting and it was getting a bit kind of like, you know, saucy. And it was cool, you know. But at the same time, I probably was gagging for a shag. And, oh, God, I hope my mum doesn't watch this programme. <laughs> It was really exciting going to work the next day because I kind of thought, oh God, what's it going to be like? How's she going to react towards me? And we went out for lunch and I was kind of sitting like, put your leg up a little bit. I had one of my legs up like that, not resting on her, but resting on the seat. And, you know, we were talking and she got her hand and she's like sort of doing that on the inside of my thigh. And I was like, oh. And I was, that was like, no, I'd never had any, that kind of, you know, thing with a girl before. Just the, it was very light, light, Sensual. gentle. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, and it was something that a guy had never done to me. Because, you know, guys don't generally sort of do that. They're more like, mm, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> she was like, oh, I really want to give you a snog. And I was like, oh. And then I said, well, you know. So how long did it take time. you from that time to having sex with her? Oh, we had sex the next day. I didn't find it repulsive at all. Mm. I didn't like think, wow, yeah. But I actually enjoyed it. And I, do you know what? It was just like knowing that she was enjoying it and it just makes me really horny. And yeah, the, the sensation, it's nice to do it. I, mm. <laughs> Couple of months after we got together, I shagged um, an ex-boyfriend. Actually, I have to admit. So you went back to sleeping with guys only after once, the first time. just the once, just to make sure that just I didn't want to sure. do it again. Meanwhile, back in Luton, Debbie has been discussing her bisexual feelings with her future husband. So, tell me, how did you break it to Orville that you were bi-curious? I think I told him that I was bi-curious over the phone. <laughs> I try not to do these things face to face because I was just like, I've got that nervous grin again. I'll just be sitting there or standing there like this. <laughs> oh, she told me that um she had um, some feelings in a woman. She had feelings for women and, um, and stuff like that. Mm. I don't want to be a prisoner to my feelings. I'm just you know, just want to be free. <laughs> Debbie thinks she has come up with a perfect solution to keep both her and Orville happy. I thought that if we had a threesome, then maybe. 
I might be able to get a little bit closer to the actual real thing because I'm both being involved. <clears throat> you know, if she want to do it, uh, yeah. Yeah, but you've got to be there too. Yeah, I'm going to be there, but, you know, it's all about, you know... But don't you what, want it? What you want. But don't, wouldn't you like to, you know, just to, you know, just say that, yeah, I've done that. Or, you know... <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have a threesome? Would you? Yes, with you. Sure. Am I sure? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I really, really do love her a lot. And I mean, you know, it's, it's not really an easy question for me to answer. I really like her a lot and I don't want nothing to come between us. Nothing, no one, you know. I really, really I think like that's her why it's so hard. Debbie's boyfriend Orville may have refused her offer of a threesome, but Debbie remains undeterred in her efforts to sleep with a girl. To help explore her bisexual urges, we've offered to introduce her to some girls who've been through similar dilemmas. Today, Angela lives with her girlfriend Ellie in London, but like Debbie, she also grew up in Luton with bisexual feelings. Angela and Ellie have offered to help Debbie by introducing her to the London gay scene. We're going to try and fix her up with one of our friends or something, or somebody that we know, or mm -hmm. you know, go out and introduce her to somebody that, that we don't even know. And, you know, we can give her a hand because it is difficult. You know, she's come from Luton and she doesn't know anybody, and it's definitely a help having us. We don't know everyone in the whole of London, but we know, yeah, you know, you. where to go and and who not to try and chat up and mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be meeting Ellie and Angela today. I'm very nervous about it because I haven't been to London for about four years. I'm just scared. <laughs> scared and excited. I'm trying to focus and get myself together because I don't know what to expect today. Oh, yeah, I'm a bit quiet. Hi. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. I'm Ellie. I'm Angela. Debbie. It's a whole new world for Debbie, and time for her to confront her fantasies. Angela and Ellie are taking her to Shush, a women-only sex shop. It's time for Debbie to decide if she's really sure she wants to sleep with a woman. It it. <laughs> Just need a bit of practice with it now. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Bam. It feels a bit weird though, you know. And it will be even, even weirder when you've got like a girl lying there like, oh, come on then. <laughs> like, oh my God, what am I doing? But sort of build it up a little bit and then end up with a really big one. Even bigger one. Yeah. Really big What's one. the biggest one here? That bit goes on your clit and that bit goes inside. And you just slide. And then you pull them off. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you feel that you're um, one step closer to um, actually having full-blown sex with a woman? Or... It does. Yeah. And do you feel happy about that? Yeah. yeah. I do. <laughs> so all you need to do now is... Now you've got all the equipment. You just need to... Find a girl! I actually Thanks. can't wait, you know. Well, that's good. That's I'd good like thing. to have one of everything. Yeah. <laughs> You'll do it eventually. I will do it. Exactly. And if he dumps me, it's all good. That's all good. <laughs> there we go. Great. It's working cheap. Oh. 
As a table dancer, Lindsay is continually surrounded by naked women, so although she hasn't fully explored her own bisexual feelings, she feels she is closer than most. Some girls, like, by curious to them would be a snog or a quick rope, you know. Other girls, it would mean sleeping with the other woman. So it's, it, there's different levels of it, which I found it starts off with a certain level, then you go to the next level, next level. So depending on what level you're, you're talking about, there's a lot of intricate detail that goes with it. I'm quite near the top of shit. There is one or two people that are really keeping me on my toes at the moment that keeps me feeling like that with a pat on the arse or a little wink or, you know, stroke of the hair at work, you know, certain things like that, you know, there's, there's that kind of sexual tension. Convinced Debbie is genuinely bi-curious and not just bored in the bedroom, Angela and Ellie introduce Debbie to the Candy Bar, one of London's most popular all-girl bars. What would you say you are at the moment? Are you straight or don't you really know? You're not straight anyway. Mm. I don't know what to call it. No. You don't have to, I mean, you don't have to sort of label yourself, but I mean, how, I try not to. so you, you find girls attractive and you like walk down the street and you see girls and think, oh, she's quite nice, she's got nice tits or whatever. How long has that been for? Sort of forever. <laughs> Although Debbie's having a great time and enjoying female attention, she still can't pluck up the courage to chat up a girl. So Angela acts as her matchmaker. It's this girl here, the uh, black girl sitting down. What it is, is this is her first time in a gay bar, OK? So basically, she, she has said that if there's anybody in this room that she kind of fancy, it would be you. <laughs> But there's someone over here which would like, would like to be introduced. So I'm going to take you over and then introduce oh. you to her. Uh, this is Debbie. Debbie, this is Hi. me. Okay. Hi. Right. Go on. Go on. She's very shy. Don't be shy. I've got a boyfriend. Yeah, but she's that girl. Okay. Yeah. This is me coming out now. I'm, I'm really nervous. My, my hands are shaking. I don't know what to do with myself. Just as Debbie seems to be making her first breakthrough with a girl, boyfriend Orville calls from Luton to express his concerns. I haven't turned my phone off on you. I was putting somebody's phone number in my phone. That's why my phone might have switched off on you. Can we just get straight to the point? It's not about me not answering my phone or my phone being switched off or my phone going to answer the machine. It's about, it's, all it is, it's about, it's about me being at a place where there's loads of women. Yeah, but what am I doing over here? I'm just talking to people. Why is it such? A, why does it hurt you so much for me to talk to someone? I don't mind cooking and cleaning and all that rubbish for you, but I'm not going to sit back and not have no friends and be like my mum. You're giving me all this argument because you think I'm doing a thing with some other woman, and I'm not even doing a thing with nobody else but you. I'm just here talking to some women about what feelings I have in that, and you know. Sorry. So I'm embarrassing you, am I? Can you tell me your number again? Because my boyfriend just ruined everything. Don't forget to call me, eh? Oh, wow. So now, can I give you a kiss? I mean, huh? Can I give you a kiss? Debbie's freedom to explore her sexuality is in sharp contrast to an older generation. Got to this bloody age and I didn't know what that was all about. Honestly. 
I know there was queer fellas, but I didn't think there was... Come up and shimmy sometime. <laughs> <laughs> what do they wear down there, then? I don't know. Oh, you fishing one. Special one? Oh, you fishing one. Artificial one? Yeah, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> they wear something called a strap-on. It's like a strap-on penis. Oh, I say a penis. Oh, isn't it awful? Oh, yeah. Do you know if I see that, then? Mm, no, do you? But you look bloody silly going about with a strapped on penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother's work had one. In Brighton, Beth is having a typical night out with her friends. They start in a straight club called Escape. <laughs> Beth seems to be getting on well with the girl she's after, and they slip away for a quiet chat. So, um, do you like girls then or not? Yeah, I can appreciate their looks, yeah. but not really, you know, overly into looks. No. Have you got a boyfriend though? No. Okay, no. sure okay, that's fair. Undeterred, Beth and her friends move on to another straight club, Pav Tav, where someone else soon catches her eye. We leave Beth and her new friend on the dance floor. While bisexual feelings may not be new, girls are now less inclined to keep them a secret. Lindsay has decided she can no longer remain in a relationship and stay true to her growing bisexual desires. I've just been out with my boyfriend. Um, it was just not working out, basically. And we're still friends. I still love him in lots and lots of different ways, just not in that kind of sexual way anymore. I'm definitely going to explore the bi curiosity more now that I've split up with him. See, she would not be my ideal woman. She's too butch. I like feminine, kind of pretty girls. I don't really like that sort of boho look at the moment. Kind of good if Paltrow is not my thing. See, she's quite cute in there. I'm very attracted to girls mainly because of the way I work with them and, and how we show our bodies off every night all the things that we get to do together and we're in like small changing rooms. Uh, we share a lot of things and you just grow very close and very fond of each other. Um, and it's not like sisters, it's more like very, very good friends. We do get loads of girls in the club because a lot of them do come in to, uh, to experience, you know, what it's like. Our curiousness is definitely on the increase because we're, I think women are a lot more comfortable with themselves now. But for us, it's no, this is normality. Being comfortable with yourself and being, kissing someone like Pam upstairs, or whatever, you know, just saying hi. We kiss each other on the lips, that's just to say hi. You know, that's, that's the normality for us. So everyone seems to be slowly catching up with our way of thinking. <laughs> Got to the point where I'm actually looking more at women than I am at men. I'm checking out chicks in their cars on the way in. <laughs> A lot of people come in with expectations of it being seedy and everything that they see on TV, and it's not. In Luton, Debbie has decided to reveal her bisexual feelings to her family, and boyfriend Orville has nobly agreed to cook her coming out meal. Debbie has kicked off the evening by announcing that she's already told her mother the news. I wrote her a letter. <laughs> she just <laughs> said, <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you know what you're doing. What about the family? I hope you thought about what the family you're going to say. <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's too late now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm fine with it because I know Debbie, but I don't really agree. <laughs> 
with like bisexual relationships. Because I know Debbie for Debbie, it's different. I know that sounds that sounds really like rude, doesn't it? It sounds like really hypocritical. I'm all right with it as long as I don't see it. <laughs> I don't really care. I've got a lot of friends who are gay, actually. <laughs> no. I'm fine with it, man. Yeah. You know. He's like bring him home to <laughs> bring him home to Eddie. I'll take them both. <laughs> nah, it's all right. You get me? It's, it's if she's exploring her sexuality, there's there's nothing wrong with that. You get me? <laughs> I think it's like she's just like trying it out, you know what I'm saying? Rather than, wow, oh, I'm a full bisexual. Like. What can a woman do for you that a man can't? I don't know, it's just. Well. Mm, it's just different. You got a boyfriend and you want to explore what exactly when you're in love, or should I say? You're in love? Yeah, but you're in love, so I why still you feel this? like. But that is cheating. That's what I'm saying. I think it's cheating. Okay. In the Bible, it says like man and woman, Adam and Eve. It don't say Adam and okay, Eve okay. and Jessica, does it? That's okay, what I think. Okay, okay. No, I'm, I'm not okay. preaching to you. I'm not we're, like. We're just preacher. Okay. No, but say he wanted to experiment with another woman. What would no, you say? say he wanted to experiment with another man. No. What would you let's say? Let's not say that. Say <laughs> I want everything. I want everything. I can't help it. That is disgusting. I want everything. <laughs> Having told her family the news, Debbie heads back to London, where Angela is taking her to see Lindsay, our by curious lap dancer, at work. Very different dancing for a woman. Women are very good at hiding what they're thinking. They'll sit there and they'll look at you, and instead of giving out little signals, they will hide it, and it's very hard. And then at the end, they go, oh, that was very good, or, you know, yeah, that was cool, you know. I just wish more and more women would come in. Try and slide the man in the end because it was like, you know, I didn't know what to do with my hands. Okay. And it was like, it was very tempting. Mm -hmm. I can really understand the men now when I see it on the TV. <laughs> and Definitely. would you have the same girl dance for you or would you have another dancer? I think I'd go through all the dancers. <laughs> and then I'd like. And then choose the best one. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and have maybe three. Uh -huh. and very tight, sort of. You should be so lucky. Does it make you more by curious about um, women and your whole situation, your whole... Yes. Your whole self? It does. Mm. It means that I have to just do something now. It's not considered unusual for younger women to enjoy watching table dancing, but for older generations, appreciation of women was far from a public affair. I think women in the war probably were a lot more than 
has been publicised because there wasn't enough men around, was there? So I think they would have had a dabble just to satisfy themselves. I think they would have wanted the comfort of another person and because there wasn't so many men around, if it was either women or animals. <laughs> <laughs> Ever curious, Elsie and Greta prove that regardless of age, women can remain open to new ideas. Oh, I say. Yeah, that one's late, yeah. Woo! Woo, it's heavy, it is. <laughs> and that's a condom. It's kind of a condom for oral sex if you're going to I have, know what you mean, yeah. have oral sex with a woman. Mm. Then you do On it. the mouth. If you might, you know, you don't have to, mm. but maybe, no. to, you know, nowadays with, um, you know, herpes and stuff. You learn every day, don't you? It's nice and thin, it feels nice. Oh, yeah, feel. It's lovely. Oh. Got the glove with it, object. Got that big bat memory. Give us a feel though. <laughs> oh, you can feel it, though. Oh, yeah. Feel that. Yeah, I'll that's, get the that's other one. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Oh, look, it's alive. Yeah. Look, feel that. Hold your hand up. Wonderful vibration. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steady on. Send it up and down your spine. Oh. I'm going to take this away from her. I'm just trying to think where to start. It was mad. A Saturday night, and we just went out for a drink. After thinking about having sex with a woman for so long, Lindsay finally found the courage to act on her feelings. The moment came out of the blue during a night out with a girlfriend. It was just nice to let your hair down and go out and not give a fuck. We said to this guy, do you want to come back with us for a threesome? And we were totally up for this. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, oh my God, what am I doing? I thought, yeah, this feels really good, actually. You know, I felt powerful and in control for the chat, you know, just saying, well, you know, we're picking you out of the whole room of men. It was kind of like, you, you know, come here. And it was just really, it was a buzz. It was a proper power trip. All sort of bundled back in, in the cab and went back to um, her flat. Slowly, I mean, I'm sitting there sort of like, come on, you know, let's get some action going. And she's like, oh, I'm not too sure what to do. And I'm like, well, you're the bisexual one, <laughs> come on. Um, so we sort of made our way upstairs. We all sort of slowly started making our way upstairs. We dimmed all the lights and that because we'd had candles and that downstairs. We all got undressed, right. getting undressed very slowly. We're like very slowly. We were watching each other, looking at each other, getting undressed very slowly. You know, we weren't undressing each other. It wasn't erotic like that. It was literally, right, we're all going to just take our clothes off. I didn't feel uncomfortable. I just kind of like laid on the bed and the other two just kind of climbed on top. She was excited about the guy, I was excited about her and it was kind of like a little chain reaction sort of thing. We started kissing her, she's a very nice kisser. This was a passionate kiss, you know, a sexual kiss, a proper sexual kiss. So then we sort of slowly sort of work our way down, kissing her breasts and everything. Um, it's amazing to touch somebody for the first time properly in bed. It was just an amazing feeling. Um, between her legs, it was just very, very soft. Um, nothing like what I'd imagined, you know. I didn't think I, I kind of thought of it as obviously being quite the same as mine, but it was to actually touch someone else's, it just felt strange, but it felt like mine as well. So, you know, I knew how, how I wanted to touch you, you know, not completely rough, but not too kind of soft. That felt amazing knowing that it is a woman and it's not somebody you've been going out with for years. You know, you're like, oh my God, I don't know how they're going to do it or is it different to what you're used to? And you're like, oh, you know, which is very good. <laughs> I never actually had full sex with a guy, but uh, he actually passed out. <laughs> I wouldn't say I had sex with her, not at all because there was no penetrative sex, but it was to me, uh, oral sex, I would say, it was kind of an oral experience. You know, we were, we were quite sort of all over each other, but there's no penetrative sex. I don't take that as being, having sex with a woman, you know, but it's, that's a start.
after a night out in Brighton. Beth wakes up alone in her student house. Things didn't turn out the way she wanted last night, but she has fond memories. I met this girl who I'd seen in there before, and, um, and she's really pretty. Uh, and she seemed like quite interesting. She's quite flirty and everything. She was dancing around and she had nice hair and stuff. Good morning. Hello. It's off to you. Thank you. Who was that girl? Did you get her number or anything? No. Oh, apparently, um, she's got a boyfriend. And... <laughs> Under the duvet, please. <laughs> Did she tell you that she fancied No, but you could tell with body language and stuff, she was really flirty and like yeah. putting her hand on my back and things when she was talking to me. Yeah. She didn't leave quickly or anything. We yeah. like danced around for ages and yeah. stuff. Did you fancy any boys last night? No. The thing is, once I'd seen that girl, I didn't really look at any boys. They were all rubbish. Were you talking to that boy or something? Oh, yeah. Oh. At first I was like, hmm, possibly, but no, his mouth was too small. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit like... <laughs> Beth may not have ended up with a boy or a girl last night, but who does she see herself with in the future? I don't, I don't see myself with any particular sex in the future. If I end up with a guy or a girl, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, as long as it's like someone that I'm in love with, and that, that might be either. Get away from it! <laughs> <laughs> Debbie has received a call for which she has waited all her adult life. I met Lena at a candy bar and she gave me a telephone number and um, she was the only person in the club that stood out that day. And I thought she's really pretty, so I, we got exchanged phone numbers and um, I texted her a few days ago and now we're meeting. I'm very nervous. Nothing's changed, it's just got more intense now and I feel like I need to do something now, just to test it out. <laughs> Okay, we go. Do you know where it's by walking? Uh, I think so. Oh. I told Orville, and he's all right with him now. He wasn't before, but he is now. He does know that I'm going to have a drink with somebody, but he doesn't know that it's a date. Which guys are they coming? Which one's the best one up here? Oh, I right here. <laughs> the, the two. The place that I was telling you about, you see, they used to do like female strippers. Oh, yeah, Sunset Strip. Yeah, they, they got something to do with the candy bar, and uh, some of them are nice. They used to have a little Canadian girl, beautiful, oh, beautiful, bum. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, so but that's what you look gone. at. Yeah, but she's gone. <laughs> But I was looking so little, you remember I was wearing like I those know, you were... sandals and I was looking so small and so skinny, I was like... No, you wasn't, I thought you looked really nice. And you stood out from all the rest of the people in there, I'm not even lying. I looked around and I didn't see anyone that was really great. Because you were looking so different than everybody else and then because to see a feminine woman in here is tough. So I was like, really? oh yeah, oh yeah. If you I was a bit help. lighter, I would be blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I would, you know. Ugh, oh, I feel so hot now. You know what people kept saying? Oh, don't wear trousers too too often because then you will look like a dyke. And I said, I don't think so. A dyke with the high heels and long nails? I doubt it. You don't look like a lesbian at all. Well, it's 
especially lesbian with a pink top and the tea top? I don't think so. <laughs> I feel so different. Yeah, my head's just like, I don't know, like, oh, this is just. I feel like I've accomplished something in my life. And this is just the first step that I'm very happy about. Anybody out there that is feeling bi curious, I would say just to do it, just do what you're feeling because you have to follow your heart at the end of the day. Everything's going to change from today. Everything is going to change. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is where my future begins. This is it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.